Okay, today we're going to be looking at this Team Group MS30 SSD. It's a 256GB version. Bear in mind this is the Serial ATA version, not the NVMe version. Which basically means it'll work in a lot of older boards and stuff like that, which the new NVMe ones will not. This version does come with a three year warranty. Um, the packaging is pretty straightforward, shows you the basics of how to fit it on the back. Um, they do two variations of this. They do the uh, M.2 2280 and the M.2 2242, where the 2242 is the smaller version. Um, basics is they both basically run at the same speeds. Um, there are various different sizes. The smaller one, they have 128 gigabyte, 256 and 512 gigabyte versions where the larger one, which is what we test at the moment, will go between 128 gigabytes, 256, 512 and 1 terabyte. Okay, there's not much in the packaging at all. The SSD itself doesn't have the best looks in the world. It's basically just got the model number, some barcodes and bits like that. Um, and on the back it's plain black. Uh, I would have rather seen it the other way around and have the information on the back and just see the chips on the front area. Team do not provide any software in the packaging but you can download their SSD toolbox from their website but bear in mind one thing the toolbox if you want to download it you have to register your email address so they can send you promotional material unfortunately there is no opt-out for this but before we do testing here's a quick word from our sponsors Okay, first of all, let's run through the test system setup. We used our standard uh, machine we usually use for all our testing for things like this. Um, it's basically a Thermaltake Level 20 MT case with a Gigabyte B360 Aorus motherboard. It's also got a Gigabyte Aorus 1060 6 Gigabyte graphics card, 16 Gigabytes of DDR4 3000 MHz Viper memory. All SSDs were tested as slave drives. Our main drive was a Western Digital Black M.2 SSD. All SSDs tested have been run as slave, so basically they did not have Windows installed on them or anything like that, they just had a basic format. All SSDs also were tested in an M.2 to PCI Express adapter provided by ICASA. That way we got an even test result across the board no matter if there's been any updates for Windows and motherboards and so forth. No heat sinks were used on the M.2 drives but I would advise it on some, especially uh, the ones that get hot which are generally the faster ones like the top end Samsung 970s and so forth. And while testing all case fans were disabled so the fans would not blow over the SSD and affect the temperature results. Okay, so let's actually look at um, the actual speed of this drive. Um, team quote 500 megabytes per second. On Crystal Disk Mark, we managed to get 550 megabytes per second, which you might think is good, but it's still the slowest SSD we have tested up to now. Uh, but bear in mind, it is also one of the cheapest, uh, if not the cheapest, you can get, uh, depending on where you're getting it from. Uh, on write speeds, uh, again the quote 400 megabytes per second, we're actually getting 509, so that's a big increase from what the quoting. It wasn't the slowest SSD we've tested, but it wasn't far from it, only uh, the Kingston A400 was actually slower. Uh, we tested again with Atto to see if we could get any uh, differences or anything on there uh, and it was a similar sort of result. It, again, it wasn't the slowest but it was basically the same sort of speed uh, as the old Samsung Evo 850 uh, which is a traditional SSD and not a M.2 socket. But again, this is a SATA based M.2, not an NVMe. Uh, the write speeds, again, similar story, but it actually lost out even more so this against the others. and was definitely, uh, without a question, the slowest write speed we've come across on a SSD in our testing up to now. 
Next is the temperature. Unfortunately, no matter however we um, connected this up, it would not actually give us a temperature with any of the testing software or anything like that. We did use an external um, probe, unfortunately, depending on where you point the probe at, it gives you different temperatures, but they did fluctuate around about the 45 degree mark. So in basics, is this Team MS30 any good, and would I recommend it? Uh, in basics, it's the slowest SSD we've taste tested, uh, both write and read speed in reality. Um, so my answer is no, uh, with the exception is if you can get it that cheap. But again, it's one of those things is most M.2 sockets these days support NVMe. Um, so if it does support that, I'd go for a proper NVMe SSD, um, which would perform two, three, four, five times faster than this uh, with ease. Thanks for watching this video all the way to the end. Don't forget to press the subscribe button over here. That way you'll get all the latest news and all the reviews we do on a weekly basis. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.